It has been reported that Texas A&M boosters paid nearly $30 million to ensure that number one recruiting class for Texas A&M. Now, obviously, the school, the coaches, cannot be involved in securing these NIL deals. That does not mean that they are not doing it, right? Uh, I am sure that Jimbo Fisher and that bunch uh, had at least some semblance of a, a finger on the pulse of what's going on. It is reportedly that they uh, they created a company that is specifically created to pay NIL for players. $30 million for 28 guys that have already signed. Seems like a pretty good deal. I think it's absolutely seems, genius. Seems but, like a hell of a deal, and, yeah. and that's over a million dollars a kid. And now you're changing these kids' lives. Yes. And and we, you and I both have said this in the past. We love this. Yes. But at Alabama and other places where the coach has full reign, full authority, and does not want to count on the boosters for anything other than dropping off a check at the door and just enjoy the wins when they come in, you rely on them for more than just that, right? You can't be in control of this. And I think that's something that scares Nick Saban. Uh, but yep. this for Texas A&M, this is genius, right? This is absolutely what they needed to have happen. A&M has been really good recruiting since Jimbo got there, right? They were pretty good at it with Kevin Sumlin. They'd have some big years. They'd have some drop-down years, et cetera. That's typical for this sport. Yep. They have not been... Jim, Jimbo's a, been consistent. Yeah, he's been a consistent top 10, uh, borderline top 5, all four yep. years that he's been there. He has never been this. Never and been all more. these reports, I think Bro Bible and fans cited and, of course, message boards galore and whatnot have been the ones to actually report on this because you can't find a lot of information about this, right? It's it's a nonprofit. It's something that they have delved up. They've created something in the state of Texas in order to basically funnel money to the kids. Yes. And we love it. Yep. Like, this is something that should happen anywhere that wants to win. Right. Hang on. And and I and I didn't I didn't mean to marry these two things. I spoke earlier about how I, I'm becoming an anarchist. Yeah, yeah. These two old bastards wanting to regulate. Listen, regulation is the cause of all the problems that we have in college football right now. College yes. athletes, major college athletes right now is because the NCAA has its head up its ass and it has for a long, long time. OK, they don't protect these kids. They don't give a shit about their safety. They don't give a damn about their education. They are complete and utter frauds with everything they do. They just want to make money. They're nothing but whores. That's all they are. I've said it before. I'll continue to say it. Getting these kids paid and 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 taking the, the wheels off, having no regulation and letting it just be a free-for-all, heaven forbid we have quote-unquote chaos until some kids start getting hurt or, 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 or start getting in major, major trouble, any more trouble or hurt than they did before this. Then, then, then you can bring that shit to me later, okay? But right now, poor black kids are getting paid. 80% of these, 90% of these kids aren't going to play in the NFL, all right? They don't have a payday. And if you think that degree is going to carry them, you're talking to a dumbass that took seven and a half years to get a college degree. Never used it a day in my life. I just went into massive debt to get it because my mother wanted me to get a degree. She wanted her son to have one. And you know what? I did that. And it cost me an obscene amount of money. All right. And it took me a long time. You and, and at no point in time did University of Mississippi ever help me get a job or do anything to improve my quality of life after getting that degree. All right. So if you think that's going to carry these kids, you are sadly mistaken. Now, I'm certain there are some schools out there that have a network of people and they take care of their graduates. I think those schools are rare, and I think almost all of them are private. I don't think yeah. any of the state schools will operate that way because they're too fucking big. They got too many damn people. They can't take care of all the kids. So I think it's good that these kids are getting paid. I think it's great that these kids are going to take care of the family. If you got a million bucks to go to A&M and you had to sign some paper saying you're going to stay at A&M for your four years of eligibility, which I'm pretty sure contracts are being written up and you're not just getting this money for nothing. Okay. I think some of these kids are getting these kind of dollars and they're not going to ever hit the transfer portal because yeah. I'm going to bet there's language in there to prevent that. But now because you're paying them, you can put language in there for that. 
So I think that's a fantastic idea. The difference is, is you put a million bucks in a kid's hands that's broken poor. Is he going to piss off a bunch of it? Sure, he's going to fuck off a lot of it. But I guarantee you he's going to pay for mom's house. He's going to pay for mom's car. They're not going to have another Thanksgiving where they're waiting in line at a food shelter somewhere hoping to get a turkey. Those days are gone. Those days are done. You can change these people's lives for generations with one recruiting class because you were good at high school football. You don't have to go play pro. You can now focus on college. You can actually use your degree for what you want because you got some money in the bank. I got out of college, and the first thing I did was get a job. And I got a job being a bullshit security guard, making eight bucks an hour. And that wasn't enough to pay my bills. And so I worked for a landscaping place on my on my days off. And I was I was digging ditches and I was I was slinging trees. Okay. And and then that wasn't enough money. So I got a job waiting tables and bartending on the nights that I had free. And I worked three jobs that paid around 10 bucks an hour so I could get the 30 bucks an hour I needed to support myself. Okay. If you get out of college, you don't longer have to worry about that. You can actually wait around for the right job to come. You don't immediately have to hit a grind because you're broke. Yes. Yes. Good thing. I'm sorry. Chaos happened. The wrong team got the wrong player. Go fuck yourself. I don't care. (laughs) I, I do enjoy when you get on these these passionate rants uh, because you you say things better than I could, but I do feel the same as you on this. Well, I, we see the thing in the world. I'm yeah. willing to say these things, and I know it loses credibility. You still have a show, and I don't, somewhere else out in the ethos, and I'm certain. <laughs> I'm certain it's because you're the model of professional, and, and I, I appreciate that, and I value that's probably the reason we have a show, okay, because nobody would pay me. No one would take me serious. I don't think the things I'm saying are wrong, and we agree with them. I'm, I don't know any other way to say it. Is it inappropriate? Is the way I talk rough for some people to hear? Probably. Yeah, I sound like a yeah. like a Neanderthal. I am. Okay, <laughs> I cheated my ass but, off through college. Ole Miss didn't need to help me out. They right. didn't owe me anything. I, I took that piece of paper by crook. All and, right, and and you use that book, by the way, that Malcolm Gladwell book, yes. to the best of your ability. So everybody that taught again, me more than seven read. and a half years of college <laughs> across three universities. That one book taught me more than anything I learned at any of those places. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. I agree with everything you're saying. I agree with that. And, and what you are saying is something that deserves to be said, right? Which is why this show exists. I mean, the whole point of us doing this is so that we can talk about this sport, well, these sports, all these different things. That Another are going top on 100 world. kid went to Jackson State. Yeah. Another I, top 100 kid went to Jackson State. Now, they keep saying, we're not paying them. They want to come here for the love of the game. Why the hell are you paying them? There's yeah. money down in Jackson. I know where that money is. I can go find it. I know those people. Pay those damn kids. If you're not paying them, Dion, then fuck you, man. No, I, I guarantee that they are they are being taken care of. There's no I, way. But here's the thing: like they're ashamed of it. Like they're saying, "I get, I guess we got this one too, only because we paid them." And I'm thinking, who cares why you got them? Who cares how you got them? No, the you whole, got them. Listen, the idea of you know Brad Pitt playing Billy Bean in Moneyball. It's it's. Who, who cares how we won? Did we win? Oh, who gives a shit? And who cares what anybody thinks of you? Did you win? Did you get the kid? Yes. How did you get him? It doesn't matter. Who cares? And the if name, you got him because yeah. you paid him, then tell people that. How many Let college football know. coaches are keeping their jobs because of their APR? Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, that's got it, it, it really, that's, it, it's yeah. all something that you can toss into a press release to make your school sound good. But at the yes. end of the day, it is wins and losses. You either win now, or you lose. I, I will tell you, there is a world where if you did pay these kids a, a substantial amount of money and those kids come from rough backgrounds and they don't want people knowing they got a lot of money, then that's the one pass where I would say, okay, I, I'm going to make it. I'm just going to say we didn't pay them. I'll go out and I'll lie. And if yeah. it hurts us in recruiting later because people think if I got to settle for, for this HBCU, but I'm not going to get paid, then I don't want to settle for that. That's, that's a conversation you got to have with the next kid up. Okay. Oh, yeah. And you got to let them know, Hey, I'm doing this, but I'm doing it. And I'm letting these people stay private. Okay. Because they got a lot of people that are going to, cause when you get this money, hands going to come out and oh, yes. somebody has got to be strong enough to tell those people get away. 
get away. I got to yeah. take care of me and I got to take care of my family. Uh, you've I'm seen sure it with these the, kids have yeah. kids. They have loved ones. They've got moms. They, got, they, they can't take care of aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody. Okay. You take yeah. care of mama and Charles Barkley did this better than anybody I've ever heard of. He said when he first got money, the best advice he gave was, is he didn't know how to tell everybody no. And he was afraid of it. But the strongest person in his life was his mother and his grandmother. And he gave them everything. He keeps literally, he said, and I don't know if he still does this, but he said he kept half of his checks for himself. And he gave his mom the other half of everything. And he said, you take care of who you want. So if you want something, you go to mama. Yes. Don't call me for a dime. You go to mama. And if mama thinks you're worth a damn and you could convince her because she had a better bullshit, you know, meter on her. Yeah. She knew how to handle this family. Well, she think was about the it. matriarch think, think, of the family. Think about how young those guys are, right? We've seen it yeah. multiple times with kids that when they first get drafted into the NFL, Trent Richardson was a big one, right? Yes. As soon as he got drafted, immediately yes. everybody that he went to school with, that he was buddies with, et cetera, everybody wanted their cut. And right. he didn't know how to how to handle it, and it cost him. Yep. Uh, not not just money, but it cost him with his career because he, he couldn't he couldn't separate on the field and off the field, right? And there's a ton of guys that have done that, and that's somebody that had three years of college, right? This is we're talking about kids that are fresh out of high school. Yep, like it's impossible to do. Uh, I don't even know how we got on that topic, but it's it it well, it's anyway, the same. It's just, it all it all ties in together. What Texas A&M is doing? I is, don't want regulation. Good. I don't want regulation at all, and I don't care that it hurts LSU. LSU is one of the poorest states in the union. Louisiana is okay, and we've got big money boosters, but we're really behind on how we're handling uh, NIL deals. All right, and this is probably going to hurt us in a negative way. I don't care. I still think it's right. It doesn't matter if it makes my school lesser. I would I, I would imagine that right Brian Kelly means will, will right. figure out a way to do it. Brian Kelly I, will I'm figure sure, it out. I'm, I'm, I'm certain I'm certain he will at some point, but but you know, we 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 lost our best defensive back and we almost lost our best receiver because we couldn't get an NIL deal done. And so so I don't That's know. That's a fact. That's a fact. It, it, yes, but I, I, but what facts. I'm what I'm saying is I don't know that I don't know that Brian Kelly necessarily wanted wanted Eli Ricks, and I don't know that he necessarily you know uh, it feels like they need Butte, right? I mean, we'll see. But you um, know how when a when a head coach gets in and he likes to clean house a little bit, that could have something to do with it. That, that could be true. That could be true. So, but it didn't it didn't take away the fact that we had NIL problems. Yeah. And we're still like we got Butte taken care of. I don't know that we've gotten anybody else taken care of. True, true. So <laughs> it's it's that it's that type of stuff that that once again I'm going to be consistent. It doesn't matter if it hurts my school or helps my school. If I think it's right, it's right across the board. It doesn't matter. Agree, agree. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.